I think I'm gonna officially just change my speech to transmute Israel. Um, let me tell you about the day that I actually quit my job without leaving my place of employment, all with a single thought, and began my new career. See, it was been six years that I've been able to give speeches. I gave birth to a, a creation called Creative Change, and it's a workshop that I've been working on. All of this was given to me through one simple question. Philip, have you ever thought about becoming a motivational speaker? And as a Toastmaster, Toastmaster, let me tell you a little bit about myself. See, I've been blessed and had the opportunity to own my own businesses. I train racehorses. I fly airplanes. I've been a Massachusetts State Constable. And now I work at MCI Norfolk State Prison. And it was there when I gave a few speeches and I got the same question from multiple people. Billy, have you ever thought about becoming a motivational speaker? My thought process started to kick in. If I, I never had that on my mind, ever. But when you just constantly hear it over and over again, it starts to bring something into me. See, I didn't know that the things I was doing at this prison, I was serving as a life coach for most of the people. Was, I was blinded to it. I had no idea. But I decided to follow it. So I picked up the phone one day. I called my wife, and I said, hey, I'm thinking about to change my life. She said, what are you talking about? I said, I think I'm going to try to become a motivational speaker. Now, being the supportive backbone that she is, she was a little bit more worried about the constant paychecks and the benefits that we've grown to know and love, you know, every two weeks for the last six to eight years. And I was like, I'm not stupid. I'm not going to get up and just walk away. But I'm going to follow my path. I'm going to follow my dream. I'm going to follow my goal. So... Since that's happened to me, I took it upon myself to know that I had to better myself. I had to come to a place where I can reach a level that I didn't know I can find. I was introduced to Toastmasters. The day I walked in here, you might have thought I was cool and calm and collective and smooth as I am. <laughs> but I was scared. Like It took everything in my power to get here. I came up with every excuse on why I couldn't make it. Things like, you know, oh, I, I got to do something around the house, or I got to walk the dog. Or it was actually my mother-in-law's birthday that night. And I was like, you know, we got to cut a cake. I got to be there for that. Got to feed the monster. <laughs> but when I came up with every excuse on why I shouldn't, my why kicked in. Why do I have to be here? Why do I need to come? Because somebody told me that in order for you to be where you need to be, you have to be here to get there. So I had to harness my will. Billy, get up. Go. Your dream was only a 20-minute drive away from this house. So as I'm driving, nervous, not knowing what I was getting myself into, but I knew it couldn't have been bad. <clears throat> I walked through these doors. And I see you people, and you welcome me with open arms, and I appreciate that. I learned that I was influenced by everything I seen. I knew this was a place that I needed to be. I knew if I, I if I got a dream to get to, this is the place for me. I couldn't wait to get out of here to tell people what I learned, to show them what I've done. So since that time, I had the opportunity to do a few more speeches at work. It's at an annual retreat we call the Restorative Justice in the prison. Mr. George knows about that. Hmm. Yes. This speech, I had the opportunity to speak in front of inmates, obviously, prison officials, judges, district attorneys, high-ranking college professors, police chiefs. But through all that, I come to find out how powerful public speaking can be. So I went back into the prison system and I created every Tuesday my little doodad I got with the guys called the Motivational Hour. This is where 
we get to speak and I get to show them that they have a voice and they can be heard. No matter what their circumstances is, no matter what their situation is, everybody has a story and everybody can learn from it. So <laughs> it took all of that for me to realize that I have a gift that I believe I can share with the world. And I need to present it some way, somehow. Because I know what I'm doing for life now is a good thing, but sometimes you gotta leave good to get the great. And that's my dream. I gotta get the great. I know I was meant to do something better than what I'm doing. And I'm in a small box now in the prison, but I got something I gotta give to the world. That's my focus, that's my aim, and that's my mission. That's where I'm going from here. And I'm glad you people are with me on my mute journey. And I appreciate the fact that I am able to release everything I have and you're able to feed me back on what I have to do to get to where I got to go. With that being said, I needed, I needed to know that I have to wake up every day knowing my why. And I'm not going to let another moment go by without me showing what my why factor is. I'm building Mallory, and change is real.